Welcome to the world of Neurotron. It's time to see Photoscore in action. In this video, we'll look at a typical Photoscore workflow. To get the best result from your scans, you'll want to take a moment to define the needs of your score beforehand. You'll save yourself a lot of cleanup time after. First, is the score handwritten or printed? Check the appropriate box. Next, let's take a look at the preferences. You can find the preferences in three different ways. Under the Photoscore Notate Me menu, with the keystroke command comma, or you can click the cog in the upper right hand corner of the window. Here it's good to review your score and decide what elements are in this particular piece. Go ahead and uncheck what is not necessary. Also important to consider is if you have a transposing score. Back in the main window, we're going to go up to the menu bar. Here under Help, you'll find Scanning and Accuracy Tips. This is a really great guide that you should review before your first scanning experience. Most importantly, note that staff height has a direct correlation to the scanning resolution. Smaller stays will get better results from a higher resolution. Let's see Photoscore in action. I've downloaded a PDF of Handel's Messiah. I'm interested in pages 191 through 201, the famous Hallelujah Chorus. Were I to be scanning this, a review of page 191 would reveal the smaller staves in the vocal part. This would be an indication that I want to up my scanner's resolution to 400 dpi rather than 300 dpi. Lucky me, I already have a PDF. All right, I've got printed music checked. Now I could click open PDFs. But as it so happens, I have a PDF of this score on my desktop, so I can just drag and drop it onto Photoscore. And I will get some helpful prompts. I'll select high because of the small vocal staves we mentioned earlier. As I said, I want pages 191 through 201. It takes a moment to import. Away we go. It's on to the scans pane, and each page is being read and sent to the scores pane. How long this takes depends on the speed of your computer and the length of your score. Considering the low resolution and small stave size, this score came through great. I've still got a little cleaning up to do. As I hover over the first few obvious errors, notice I can see their exact location in the original in the window above. And for more detail, I can go to the View menu and select Full Detail. Now I have Full Detail View, which really shows me the finer details. Let's start fixing a few things. If I hover over this title and double-click, notice this text window comes up. I can change the N question mark to Number. Notice the style is Title, which is correct. If it wasn't, I could change it here. Next, we'll go to this rev. That's listed as lyricist. Let's change that to miscellaneous page. Now, looking at Allegro, I double click. The same window comes up. The style is correct, tempo, but notice I don't have my quarter note. I'm going to delete this dot and I'm going to click on the quarter note symbol. Notice it's correctly defined as Allegro quarter equals 72. Let's set the instrument names. If I go to the left here, you'll see this ghosted staff five. I'll double click that and I get the edit instruments pane. Staff one, I happen to know is soprano. So I'll go to singers, soprano, rename. Staff two, you guessed it, it's alto. Three is tenor, of course. Four is bass. Staff five is the treble staff of the piano part. And they will show as two different staves 
So we'll have to rename them both. But Photoscore intelligently knows that that is a piano part with two staves. To get a full list of the rhythmic or timing errors, I'll go to View and open the Bad Timing Navigator. This now presents me with a list of all the problem areas. And it's really great because you can just click on one, let's say page 2 bar 10, and we'll notice in the bass part, I have these red lines. This tells me there's a timing error. This blue note with the plus tells me I have an extra 16th note of duration. It could be a rest or a note that needs to be adjusted. Looking carefully, I see that it's this C. Now I can just use my keypad. I press two on my numeric keypad and it cleans that bar right up. And you'll notice that that error has been removed from the list in the navigator. Remember, all the timing errors should be corrected before you send this file out to Sibelius or out via Music XML or MIDI. As with any software, learning the built-in or keyboard shortcuts will save you time and speed up your workflow. In our case, first on this list is the numeric keypad. Using this will be very familiar to Sibelius users. And remember, you can go to the Preferences, Editing, and change to a panel-style keypad if you prefer. Many of the items in the Create menu have keyboard shortcuts as well. This can save you a lot of time. For instance, if you type K, you can add a key. Q, a clef. T, a time signature. Z, a symbol. Here's a tip for learning keyboard shortcuts. When you go to a menu, take note of the shortcut for the item you need. Then take your cursor off the menu and use the shortcut. After you've done this a few times, you'll find you've memorized that shortcut. If I go to the tenor staff, I'll notice I don't have the tenor 8VB clef. I'm going to double click it. I'm going to find the clef I want. Click that clef, click OK. While it's still selected, if I scroll down and hold down Option, click the clef, it changes it on that next stave. You will need to go through your entire piece and check each clef on each stave system. Because it is common for an instrument to change clefs somewhere within a piece. On page two, notice the OM in Omnipotent has been misread as D minor in several places. Since this type of score does not contain chord symbols, this could have been avoided by unchecking chord symbols in the text recognition preferences before reading. But we can correct this now. If we go to preferences, and we go to reading, and we go to language, and uncheck chord symbols. Now we are going to go back to this page. I'll close the bad timing navigator for the time being. Clicking on the left icon displays the scanned page. Now I'm going to reread this page by clicking read this page. It says I'm going to replace. Clicking on the right icon displays the red page. We check and sure enough the OM is no longer D minor. It's important to mention here that any edits made to the page will be lost when it's reread, so these kinds of edits should be done first. When it comes to correcting misread lyrics, there are several ways to go about it. First, let's look at this hallelujah, which came through as one text object rather than being attached to each note. If we double click, we'll get the lyrics text window up. I'm gonna delete all this, click OK. Now, notice if I use my right arrow, it goes to the next note. Command L, L, E, OK. I'm gonna hit my right arrow twice. It's gonna select the bar line, then the next note. 
Command L, L U, OK, right arrow, Command L, J A H, exclamation point. Now I fixed those lyrics. So that's one way to do it. If you find that a lyric has been consistently misread or a syllable, let's take a look at this. Hallelujah. It should be hallelujah. And it misread it here, here, and here. This is a great example of when to use find and replace text. If we go to the edit menu, we do find and replace. This window comes up. We're going to type in, we want you to find la. It's a lyric. You're going to replace it with lu. Now we do find next. And this way, if you want to find them one at a time to make sure you're not replacing a syllable that you actually want to keep, this is a good way to do it. Hit replace, do find next. But if you're pretty sure they're all wrong, just do replace all. It found 22 instances of that. Saved me a lot of time from having to replace them all one at a time. Another way that find and replace text is very effective is swapping text styles. Let's say, for instance, these hals have been misread as expression text, and they need to be lyrics. We're going to do find, find and replace text. We're going to write hal, and we know that it is existing as expression. And we want it to be changed to hal, lyric. So we do find next, replace, find next, Replace, all done. Let's put some of these techniques together and clean up page two. Looking at the bad timing navigator, I see that page two, bar 10, base. So I click on that. It's got an extra 16th. I find the note, keypad two, that fixes that. I also notice I'm missing a key signature. Select it above, opt click. There we go, that fixes that. Page two, bar 11, alto. I see that the sharp has been read as a note. That gets rid of the timing error. Now let's add the sharp, click on the note, keypad eight, there's my sharp. This ped marking actually is a lyric, the. That's replaced. Since I already have the, click on it, opt click. Great. In review, six things to check before sending to Sibelius or exporting a file. Number one, make sure you've named your staves if there were no instrument names in the original score. Number two, key signatures. Make sure you have the correct key signature on every stave and keep an eye out for any key signature changes. Number three, clefs. Make sure you have the correct clef on each stave and make sure they are correct the entire way through the piece. Number four, time signatures. Make sure you have the correct time signature at the beginning of the piece and you've checked for any time signature changes. Number five, bar lines. Make sure there are no missing bar lines. Time signatures and bar lines directly affect the information above each measure that has a bad timing. And last, but certainly not least, check with our old friend, the bad timing navigator and make sure you have rectified all timing or rhythmic errors. Thanks for watching. And for more information and to download a free demo, visit Neurotron.com.